ninguna. Webinar kita akan mulai webinar ini dalam waktu 13.30, satu menit lagi. Ini nah.
Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues from University of Mindanao and the University of Bayangkarajaya, I'm pleased to welcome you to the fourth international collaborative lecture series. The theme that we are going to listen today is corporate risk management, IT risk, and current development. This event is an implementation of the collaboration of two universities. Bayangkara University and the University of Mindanao. Okay. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Adi Wibowo, and I'm your host today. First of all, warm welcome to TP for Brands Vice President, Vice Presidents for Brands Operation, University of Mindanao. Dr. Evelyn P. Saludes. Dr. Christian Paul Moyon, College of Business Administration. And Dean of College, Dr. Dr. Gina P. G. Israel. I also would like to welcome Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, University of Bayangkara Jaya. Ibu Dr. Istianisi Sastro Diarjo, MSAK, CA, CSRA, CACP, and our speaker, Bapak Aloysius Harimukti, PhD. This event contains several sections. Let me read them for you. Welcoming speech by Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, University, uh, Bayangkara Jaya University. Ibu Dr. Istian Sastro Diarjo. And then opening remarks by Vice President for Branch Operation University of Mindanao, Tagum, Dr. Evelyn Pesaldes, followed by resource speaker, Bapak Aloysius Harimukti PhD from Bayangkarajaya University. Afterwards, response from University of Mindanao, Dr. Christian Paul Moyon, College of Business Administration, and then the discussion. At the end of the event, there will be the submission of an e certificate to the resource speaker and participants' representative. Okay, to begin the event, let's listen to the national anthem of Indonesia Raya, followed by national anthem of the Philippines.
Tayong maghihiyo pero sa silangan ang alam ng puso sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiging sa manlulupi. Di ka pa sisigil sa dagat at bundok sa simuya. Sa langit mong bagha, may dilagang tula at tawid sa paglayang minamahal. Ang kisap ng mataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagninigin. Ang bituwing na taraw niyang kailan pa may di magdidilim. Lupa ng araw ng wala di pagsinta buhay langit sa piling mo. Ang iligayo ng pang may mga api ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo. Okay, thank you. Next, welcoming speech by Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, <coughs> by Ankara Jaya University, and also officially opened the fourth international public collaborative lecture series. Ladies and gentlemen, dear honor, Ibu Istianingsi Sastro Diarjo, MSRK CSRCAC. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Good afternoon, and thank you for Pak Adi as a moderator for our webinar today. We love it uh, to meet with all of you in the Maya room today, and today for all also for uh, participants, and greetings to Papa uh, Rector. Uh, Dr. Bambang Karsono SIMM, Dr. Uh, Universitas Tayangkara Jakarta Raya, and Vice President for Brands Operation, University of Mindanao, Dr. FGMP Saludes. Uh, for response for this webinar, Dr. Christian Paul Moyon, College of Business Administration Faculty, and so, uh, greeting to Dean of College, Dr. Gina F.A.G. Israel. Program Head Financial Management, Professor Regi C. Arun. Program Head Marketing Management, Dr. Dindo al -Kushir. Program Head for Human Resource Management, Dr. Raisa Mai Narciso. Program Head of Contency, Professor Mari Chris Lusada. Program Head of Accounting Technology, Professor Maria Teresa Ozoa. Also Head External Relation and uh, Alumni Affairs Office, Professor Pamela Agustin. Dean of College of Business Administration, Dr. Vicente uh, Montano. College of Business Administration Faculty, Dr. Christian Paul Moyon. A linkage office of external relations and international affairs office, uh, Isa Aima Monte Dramas. And uh, also, one regard from Bayangkara Jakarta Raya University in Indonesia for, uh, uh, to all participants today. On behalf of the president of Bayangkara Jakarta Raya University, we would like to thank uh, the University of Milano for the collaboration that has been established uh, in the context of scientific collaboration in the form of this webinar series. On this occasion, uh, the Ubera, Ubera Jaya Faculty of Economic and Business take full attention to the issue of information technology. The COVID-19 pandemic from March 2020 to the present. We encourage change in business uh, process by utilizing, utilizing information technology that is increasingly developing. This rapid change in business process is in line with uh, market demand for product and services and require continuous innovation. All aspects of the industries today rely on information technology, including uh, the education industry. Currently, almost 90% of 
of uh, campuses rely on the role of various online learning platform like today. As we turn uh, our webinar, we rely on internet signal chain and are not yet able to meet face-to-face -face offline. And that human limit limitation, especially with the uh, physical and social distancing process, have forced several industries that involve high level of human resource to replace them with sophisticated information technology. And uh, some example of change is uh, financial sector business process, such as uh, credit approval, opening bank account, tracking customer uh, report, just in time inventory manufacturing are designed in such a way as to reduce the involvement of human resources in each process by utilizing big data, blockchain, and artificial intelligence. Of course, this rapid change has a positive impact of company's development, but it requires a careful attitude toward the use and uh, dissemination of company information. We need a record responsible attitude regarding uh, the decision that result from using this technology. The theme of this webinar today is closely related to handling the possibility of various business trees arising from the use of information uh, technology. And this term is uh, very interesting and important as for uh, one for us. Uh, to study together. Finally, I would like to thank to all uh, the committees, uh, all division in Ubarajaya, uh, also for Rector for support us for this uh, webinar today, and for the University of Mindano for this very valuable uh, event, and for everyone or participants, please enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Terima kasih, Bu. Okay, our next program is opening remarks by Vice President for Branch Operation, University of Mindanao Tagum. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Dr. Evelyn P. Saldes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. With much pleasure and gladness in my heart, I greet the 500 participants today. My warm greetings goes to the management and administration officials of the Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya, Indonesia, and the University of Mindanao, Philippines. Indonesia and the Philippines have many similarities we have similar conditions, both in geographical as well as demographic aspects. Both countries love groupings, healthy relationships, and adhere to the idea of societal existence. To be alone and lonely is not common in our society. Family comes first in both countries. Many family members live and work together and even extended families are found in one roof or in a compound. Children are important and we respect our parents and ancestors. Education is a priority. Improving education has been an intense focus in our region in East Asia, most particularly in this generation. Both Indonesia and the Philippines value education as it is a vital tool in uplifting the economy of a country. Accessibility to quality education has been facilitated to the countryside, from the basic to the tertiary and even the graduate school. Despite the differences in the procedure, we have similarities that come in educating our youth for we value education for progress and development. Exchange in human resources build stronger ties. And this is evidenced by the presence of many Indonesians in the Philippines 
and the many Filipinos in Indonesia. Our connectivity through the ASEAN is really active. This activity and session we have today is a sign of the continuing good relationship and partnership between the two universities. We are honored and privileged that today we have the resource persons, generous of their wisdom and capabilities to share to our participants, most especially the students. Dr. Ischianingsi Sastro Di Harjo and yes. Dr. Aloysius Harry Mukti will surely shed light and inspire everyone this afternoon. We also have students from UM Tagum College to join with the University of Mindanao, Maine, and we are honored to be with you. With this, my heart is happy and grateful to the organizers and supporters of this fourth international collaborative lecture series. Good day, everyone. Thank you for the remarks, Ms. Evelyn, based on this. And now, heading to the main event. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, let me briefly um, read his experience and activities. Papa Aloysius Harvey Mukti, PhD. Um, as you see uh, on your screen, it's now actually in Bayangkara, Jakarta University. And the Corporate Audit Committee and risk. Sorry, Cor this is Uh, Dr. Christian uh, for this opportunity and to enhance our collaboration, especially enhance our collaboration in uh, topic research, uh, corporate research regarding information technology. So before we are going to start, I'm going to uh, try to share my screen. I hope it's is ready. Is it okay? My share screen. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can see. Okay, so before I'm going to start, uh, good afternoon and greetings to all participants. And for sure, my beloved students from Ubara Jaya and also my beloved students from University of Mindanao. One regards from uh, Jakarta, Indonesia. So today's topic will be uh, risk management, but we are going to specify this topic into information technology risk. Why I'm bringing up these issues? Because in this pandemic era, information technology becoming more riskier, but in the same time, it's bringing the opportunity for our daily activity and for sure for the corporate. But we should know in both hands what actually the risk and the consequences when we are going to deal with the information technology right now. So uh, I'm going to start with the, our daily activity. Uh, in front, uh, information technology for this pandemic uh, era is quite fun actually. 
It seems everyone enjoying their quality time with their own personal smartphone and laptop. Start in the morning to check the traffic, weather, check our appointment and email. We have Siri or Alexa. Uh, we are already familiar with Siri, but also Alexa is more uh, famous, I guess, because with the voice recognition base, we are no need to open our laptop. We are no need to type in everything with it because it is based on voice recognition. So we are just easily made, uh, open Siri or open Alexa, and then we are just put common there, at the, and then we are going to say, Alexa, how about the weather today? Alexa, uh, am I have appointment today? That will be the contribution of voice, rec voice recognition technology. Okay, so we are going to put more. After checking our appointment, after checking the weather, the traffic for today, we are walking to our office or campus. Then we can easily order online transportation, Grab, or other platform. Lunchtime, don't worry. We also familiar with online meals platform. Online groceries is also available, so you are no need to stand in line in the department store because the grocery is now easily online in the platform. During the night, we can spend our time watching movie through Netflix or Disney. Yeah, so uh, we are no need to go to the theater, go to the movie theater, stand in line just for watching movie. Yeah, Netflix and Disney is just to others than hundreds of online movie platform. Yes, so this is going to be our daily activity, our new daily habit in this new pandemic era. So if you have noticed, it's almost 22 hours. It's almost because we have another hours for uh, ourselves, but almost of our time is getting in touch with the information technology platforms, especially we are recognizing artificial intelligence in the very narrow definitions. We are going to discuss what is actually artificial intelligence in the narrow definition later in our discussion. So, still in introductions, all this habit actually bringing us to the more broader scope. How is actually the governance and accountability of information? Did we realize that the occurrence when we order meals, for example, it will create some kind of patterns. What is actually our favorite meals? What is our favorite site disease? What is our favorite desserts? Then this pattern will create business opportunity. Isn't it? Yes. Why? Because assuming, this is assuming online meals platform, assuming grab food, they also can provide master data Consumer, consumer profile. So let me put emphasis on profiling consumers. Then this online platform of data, now they can sell this information to the F&B industry or food and beverage industry. Because uh, online platform meals, they have profile of consumers. They can divide that profile into region, even country. So that was only one example. Can you imagine that all our decisions in online platform will contribute to the digital tracing? Yes, so I put emphasis on the digital tracing. That will be our evidence in technology era. So in this session, we are trying to look from another perspective. How corporate actually organize this flow of data and information in technological platform. The objective from this session actually to trigger the awareness at least among us when we decide to input information, please also in the same time knowing the consequences. That will be the introduction of, uh, and also the objective from our discussion today. And this is the outline for uh, 
the web sessions. The first one is information technology risk management. Second, information technology governance framework. And this is the third one, the opportunity research, responsibility in digital era. And then we are going to conclude, we are going to close our webinar session with the further awareness as, a, as an academy, as a researcher. So I'm going to start with the first outline from our webinar session is information technology risk management. So what is actually risk? This is sounds of theoretical, but this is quite, uh, quite fundamental to knowing what is actually risk. Risk is defined as an uncertainty that a foreseeable loss or damage can result for such uncertain probabilistic event. It can be in the form of technical and operational risk, it also can be in form of data and information security risk. And then it also can be in the form of organizations, project, and human risk. Actually, many literature, they are already provide several types of risk. We have financial risk, we have any kind of risk. But the most important awareness of risk, it should be integrated corporate risk. So we are not going to discuss risk impartial. If we are noticed, the consolidation of risk is also important for corporate. So the uh, broader scope, the comprehensive scope is quite important because risk cannot be seen as a partial. It should be seen as a comprehensive view. So I'm going to zoom, I'm going to emphasize on the technology risk as a part of enterprise risk management or integrated corporate risk management. So uh, that will be the introductions of uh, information technology risk management. So uh, let's point out of the risk of information technology. It can be defined as degree of risk sensitivity Okay, in this slide, and this appetite of the entire enterprise to the process of information technology. Okay, so that will be the definition of IT risk management. Uh, risk, uh, risk, the common, step, uh, the common step in risk IT, the first one is risk identifications. This is very uh, in the first step when we are going to identify risks that inherent in our corporate. So we are moved to the corporate perspective for a while. Okay, uh, risk identification in information technology can be in the form of list of vulnerability and different incidents concerned as well as their consequences and the assets as well as network that are risk to be managed. So let's take a look at several examples specified to information technology infrastructure. The first one, this is example, if we are want to make a list regarding IT infrastructure risk. First example, a health check to ascertain the current state of all physical hardware, machine, office equipment, and network. Because we are discussing about IT infrastructure, then the discussion will be more to physical hardware. Regarding network, how we connect to the outside world or other office? Is it secure network? That will be the trigger questions. How about the models, versions, but security, antivirus, and firewall. That will be the questions for IT infrastructure risk. How about disaster recovery? How about business contingency? If there's any problem in our server. That will be example for IT infrastructure risk identification. Now let's move on to the second example. 
This is specified to IT systems and business applications. The example will be warranties and license issue. Yeah, warranties and then license issue. We are hoping that we are going to use the original license for all our uh, software or our applications. Another example for IT systems and business applications in risk identification is client data. Is it backup internally or externally devices? When backup are carried out, how frequently? Yeah, because this is going to be related with the cost of regarding the client data backup. The next example is about the governance. The governance is quite important for this aspect because governance is the assurance, governance regarding accountability, the person who will take in charge for the responsibility. So what will be the example of IT identifications in terms of governance? How about the framework? Do we have framework for our implementation of information technology? Yes, framework is quite important and also standard operating procedure. So you already have infrastructure, you already have the very, uh, in the, uh, very current versions, but how about the standard operating procedure? Yeah. SOP is part of governance and then framework is a part of governance aspect. So I'm going to give you like uh, this very technical sample that corporate usually uh, they are considered regarding uh, data backup server. Let me put example: if there's a fire, is there a, if there's a typhoon or flooded in your server, and your server is destroyed, you need a system for getting the firm backup and running. So. So we are, discuss, uh, we are discussing about where we are going to put our backup server systems. The questions, the first question is, are you going to put backup server in the same city? Let me put example, if my corporate uh, established in Jakarta, is it I'm going to put my backup server in Jakarta? So this is the trigger questions. If I put in the same city in Jakarta, how about if there's any natural disaster? Because when Jakarta gets flooded, and then more, uh, I guess almost 80% area in Jakarta is also getting flooded. So that will be one consideration. Okay, so corporate going to move the backup server into another uh, into another country. Uh, we are going to put in a very uh, ma uh, very uh, far away from rural area. Uh, are we already considered if there's any political issue, political chaos? Because when one country get hit by the political chaos, it means several countries also get the impact. Yeah. So is it uh, is it quite uh, wise if you put our uh, several backup in the same uh, in the in the same country? Okay. So the trigger question that will be the trigger question. Okay. So corporate finally decide to put a backup server system in another country. Yeah. So when we put our backup system in another country, let me put example, usually in Asian country, we put our data backup in Singapore. So there are several considerations when, put, when we put our several backup data in Singapore. The first one, we, sh we should coordination regularly. Why? Because if, even we are put our data in Singapore for a backup server, they have schedule for backup server maintaining. Yeah, so we should put notice their schedule for maintaining uh, their own backup server in other country and also time difference. Yeah, several uh, corporate in Indonesia they put in European uh, region and also in another country. We should notice about the time difference when we are need to access the data. That will be the consideration and all and also the another priority issue that we should consider and corporate make, uh, have short decisions. Okay, so that will be the uh, one example of uh, many aspects that we, we should consider regarding uh, secure of our information technology. 
Okay, so we are going back uh, to the IT risk management. The first one is risk identification. So in IT risk management, we have uh, four main uh, steps. The first one is risk identification. Mm -hmm. The second step is gap analysis. Yeah. So I'm kind. Of, uh, I'm quite afraid that you are going to get this material partially. Don't forget. So. Uh, let me put uh, emphasize that IT risk management consists of risk identifications. The second one is gap analysis. The third one is remediations, and then the last one is adherence. So right now we are going to move to the gap analysis. So after risk identification, we already have a list of uh, risks. Then we are going to do the gap analysis. The gap analysis is quite uh, easy for the theoretical base actually. We are going to analyze the firm in current situations or existing situations. That will be include the uh, inherent risk. And then after we have uh, analyzed the firm current situations, we are going to identify the desired future state from wishes to reach. But how to formulate desire? This is will involve comprehensive discussion from all level of management because this is going to be related with the bottom line number of profit that we only going to achieve. The third one is define the distance between these two situations. So we have existing situations and also we have expectation situation or uh, usually determined by the BOD. Then the gap will be our homework, will be our assignment to minimize the gap. That will be the gap analysis. But don't forget to minimize this gap analysis. There's a cost. There's a, a cost that will involve yeah, and will uh, reduce the uh, bottom line of profit from corporate. So we should be careful with the priority to reduce the this gap analysis. So after the second step, gap analysis. There's uh, here we go to the third step. Third step is remediations. <coughs> Uh, so remediation is action plan to address issue that came from gap analysis. So you cannot uh, move to the action plan without gap analysis. Uh, it can be any form, yeah, enhancement of your IT infrastructures. Also, it could be review of standard operating procedures but we should consider regarding the budget and also the long run for correct object. Yeah. So regarding the remediations or action plan is not necessarily always in the terms of expense, but we also could review our standard operating procedures. And the final step from uh, IT risk management is adherence. No action plan is provided. Don't forget monitoring to ensure that action plan is accordance to the timeline and align with the corporate objective and audit of IT environment. And audit of IT environment is the other subject, the other topic that we are not going to cover in this webinar session because it uh, because it are uh, in the broader scope in broader discussion. So, but you can. Uh, put your own literature, you can put uh, on your search into audit of IT environment. Okay, so we are, uh, so we are going to wrap up our discussion regarding IT risk management. Don't forget, we have risk, ident uh, risk identifications, we have gap analysis, we have, uh, we have remediation, and then we are going to close with the adherence. Adherence, don't forget, uh, in these steps, uh, we are going to monitoring the uh, our action plans according to the uh, corporate objective and corporate time. Okay, so that's uh, wrap up for uh, subtopic, the first subtopic. Okay, number two, we are going to uh, move into the second subtopic information technology governance framework. Uh, in, the, uh, in the earlier, um, I already mentioned about the importance of framework. Uh, this is quite common. Uh, I also put the literature over here. So IT governance is an element of corporate governance. So, okay, so we realized that corporate governance is not only in terms of financial aspect. 
If you notice, there's a lot of literature that uh, always connect between corporate governance and financial aspect. Yes, IT governance is also part of corporate governance. Compliance aspect, it will also relate to the IT aspect. IT governance frameworks enable organizations to manage their IT risk effectively and ensure that the activity associated with information and technology are aligned with their overall business object. So also we are noticed right now that business objective is not only in terms of profit monetary, but also our compliance regarding IT aspects. So it might be one of us here interested to conduct research in IT framework this is adapted from uh, ISO. Uh, this is for, from Luis Antoni, uh, Literature 2015. Yeah. Um, yes, we are going uh, in a framework, especially when we are conducting research, and also corporate need a framework for their implementation of IT. Okay, so this is based from uh, ISO. First aspect, if we are put uh, notice on this framework, first aspect is external factor for IT governance consists of. So if we are notice in this arrow with the uh, color uh, with the pink color over here, the first one is business pressures. How about the competitor? Uh, how about profit determinations? That will be the business pressures. This is, uh, don't forget that business pressures is also came from uh, board of commissioner or but what board of commissioner uh, it might be dispute board of commissioner is came from a uh, two tier uh, governance but I, if i did not mistaken philippine is one tier board system so uh, they have a non executive director uh, giving their business pressures because uh, usually board of commissioner or shareholders they are going to uh, determine what uh, objective of the profit that we should achieve for this year. Number two, uh, external factor is regulatory obligations. This is quite, dy uh, quite dynamic. Uh, we should notice the changes of uh, regulatory obligations. Uh, the third one is source of authority. That will be the external factors. Number four is stakeholder expectations. Stakeholder expectations uh, from the tax authority, from the uh, employee, and then many other aspects, others than shareholders. And then the fifth is business needs. Especially business needs is going changes right now. Uh, COVID pandemic affect the business process that uh, our deeds already mentioned before. We are more utilizing of IT. Uh, we are going to enhance a more sophisticated of information technology. That will be the business needs right now. Uh, but don't worry, my beloved students, that uh, as a human resource part, we are going to uh, still more uh, contribute to the corporate. So no need to worry about the IT. Uh, after the external aspect, we are going to move into IT governance activity. So uh, the color is a uh, blue one. Yeah, this is kind of genre of music, EDM. But EDM is in here framework is different. EDM is evaluate, direct, and monitor. It will be in the uh, second stage. This is the blue one. Uh, EDM evaluate. Uh, what we are going to do in uh, evaluate uh, evaluation of business proposals and the performance and conformance. Yeah. So there will be two different things: performance and conformance. Yeah. Uh, after uh, evaluate, we are going to direct in which the governing body. Yeah. Is it board or senior executive? Uh, who is responsible and accountable for strategic decision? Of, uh, for sure, in my opinion, it should be part of BOD. They are should determine the strategic uh, directions. Uh, and then the last one for EDM, the last 
uh, word, sorry, the last uh, the last uh, phase is uh, monitor. Monitor of the of the of the organizations for all information technology management. So, monitor in this IT governance is uh, have same definition uh, with the more adherence in IT risk management. That will be the second stage. The third aspect of information technology governance are trying to relate IT governance itself and plan do or we call it PDCA activity. Yeah. So uh, when we are going uh, to relate uh, the ITG itself and PDCA activity, so it resulted the first one is DP. So when you are, uh, it might it might be you are questioning. So what is actually DP over here? We have uh, CE and AM over here. DP is direct and planned activities. Yeah, uh, CE over here is check and evaluate, and then AM over here is act and monitoring. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to uh, DP is do, uh, DP is direct and plan, CE is check and evaluate, and uh, AM is act and monitor. Okay, so that will be all for uh, IT governance framework. Yeah. Uh, this is in the operational level around the IT enable business. Yeah, in the bottom of the IT governance, this is for uh, operational level. Yeah, uh, like I mentioned before, this is quite important IT governance framework in terms of research or uh, corporate implementation of IT. Yeah. Okay, so this is the explanation. I'm uh, already. Uh, Mentioned it before, yeah. IT governance activity, EDM, don't forget, people with direct monitor, how ITG and PDCA connected. We have DP, CE, and AM, yeah. So, uh, for the more you can uh, Google this um, research or this article from Juris and to me, uh, to me, to those, uh, 15. okay, okay. So that's wrap up for our second subtopics. Uh, that is quite a theoretical base, but fundamentally, this is quite important with, uh, because methodology, methodology and framework is uh, going to be our framework when we are making decisions. Okay, so this is the third one. A responsibility in digital era. Uh, responsibility in digital era, uh, a new dimension of the human technology. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, from the paper of Sue Chatska in 2021, if I, uh, 2020, a new initiative and part of social responsibility. Yeah. So, uh, responsibility is important because it will relate to the corporate governance principle. Uh, so, if you remember, one of my students here uh, who are also uh, Pursuing corporate governance subject from University of Mindanao, don't forget the principle of corporate governance is accountability. Yeah, in specific, accountability is person that will responsible. So responsibility, accountability is quite related because we are going to point out the person will take in charge or responsible. So. Uh, with the good corporate governance as a main source, several development in research we are knowing right now is corporate social responsibility. You are quite familiar with the corporate social responsibility. Now, recently, there's another aspect of good corporate governance that is corporate digital responsibility or CDR. Yes, so if you are already subscribed to my YouTube channel, Independent Training, I already discussed regarding corporate digital responsibility as a research opportunities. Uh, several de definitions regarding uh, corporate digital responsibility, uh, a new dimension of the human related with the technology relations, new initiative and part of social responsibility. So. This is we uh, adding our uh, knowledge regarding social responsibility. Uh, 
This is not in terms of uh, sharing our profit, but also we are contributing to the responsibility in uh, our technology implementation of IT. Uh, CDR also means the awareness of duties binding the organization. So uh, maybe you have 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ms. Corporate digital responsibility means the awareness of duties by being the organization active in the field of technological development and using technology to provide services. So we have uh, four main process in corporate digital responsibility as a set of shared values and norms. The first one is creations. Uh, I'm sorry if you, have, if you have get confused with this. Uh, uh, First one is creations. Number two is operation and decision making. Number three is inspection and impact assessment. Number four is refinement of technology and data. Okay. This is the four main process of uh, corporate digital responsibility. Now we are going to take a look uh, very briefly. The first one is creations. What is creations? When creating any digital asset, development of technology, capturing data. It is the responsibility of those designing and implementing the asset to ensure that its design and implementation embody ethical value. For instance, the design of new machine learning must ensure the presence of transparency and accountability characteristics. There's a quite uh, I put example in our discussion in the our end of discussion uh, subtopics regarding transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. We are going to discuss later. And then uh, number two or the second steps is operation and decisions making. This stage covers all aspects related to the actual use of digital asset after their deployment. So after their deployment, it means after the, the implementations, the stage of operation and decision-making constitute a multi-level phenomenon spanning from corporate guidelines for how to use particular technology and data to specific individual related to the, their day-to-day -day use, inspection and impact assessment. That will be operations and decision-making. The third one is inspection and impact assessment. Organizations should critically assess the result operating digital assets and the decisions making that occurs on the basis. This must include a broad perspective on the effect on all stakeholders, which involve both intended and unintended consequences of the decisions. Number, this is the last one, refinement. Yeah. Refinement, uh, there's a several keywords. We are going to revise refinement, terminating or deleting the data. Yeah. So refinement, there are uh, three keywords. We are going to revise the technology and data, or we are going to terminate the data, or we are going to deleting, uh, terminating an application, sorry terminating an application or we are going to delete in this day. So that will be the uh, corporate digital responsibility. Yeah. So if you are get interested in corporate digital responsibility framework, this is the framework. This is from uh, LoveChat et al. 2021. Yeah. This is quite new research opportunity. Uh, uh, I bet that you need this framework for your literature review in your chapter two. So this is the framework. Yeah. Uh, I uh, this is uh, actually we have several paper, but I put the, this is the very current paper that I put over here. Yeah. So uh, this is the framework for corporate digital uh, responsibility. If you are notice when uh, I'm uh, quite briefly uh, giving you this is the. First, uh, in internal process, refinement, creation, operation, and inspection. So, uh, we, we, uh, when you notice, this arrow is never end up. Yeah, it means there is cycling business. There is always um, new uh, new uh, approval. They are need a new uh, 
review. Yeah, this is the data and the technology. And then don't forget this square. We have uh, parties that relate to the corporate digital responsibility. We have artificial technology actors, yeah, individual actors, organizations, and institutional government or legal actors. So these four parties is related to the uh, corporate digital responsibility framework. Okay, so the first part is organizations, CDR. Now I'm mentioning a CDR. Yeah? You all are already familiar with the CDR. So CDR provide organizations with a set share value and norms to guide their operations with respect to the creation and use technology and data. The part is number one. Part is number two is individual actors. Yeah, the organization mission and value must be translated into actionable guideline. Yeah, so mission value don't forget it should be translated into actionable guideline for users, especially for managers, techno, uh, technology designers, and also the other employees. Uh, the third one is uh, this is still uh, parties uh, artificial and technological actors. Yeah, the key question is whether and how we can dele uh, delegate digital responsibility to artificial actors and take responsibility for their actions. Yeah. So in this uh, discussion, actually, we are noticed that we cannot put blame on uh, technology. Actually, the human is behind the technology implementation. So. Like I mentioned before uh, to my beloved students, we are, we are no need to worry that the technology will replace us. No, because the accountability of information implementation of technology is uh, depend on the person, depend on the person that um, behind the technology. The part number four is uh, institutional, government, and legal actors. Yeah, this category include government or judicial entities. Yeah. A stock exchange, and then uh, we have financial authority services in Indonesia example. They also uh, put emphasis in the technology implementation. Okay, okay. So that is our last uh, subtopic. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. That is the third sub subtopic. Now uh, I'm going to put example right here. This is quite familiar. If you are getting to know, uh, this is a game calling a uh, Flappy Bird, and I'm sure that I'm not going to play uh, these uh, applications. If you notice this uh, game of Flappy Birds, uh, they are capturing our faces. So this is example of accountability, transparency regarding information and data. So. Did you aware that might be in the next five years, personal identification number or, or we call it PIN, especially for digit PIN, it's not relevant anymore. It might be in the next five years, personal identification number is no longer exist. Yeah, if you notice in our Android or might be uh, iOS based, now to unlock your device is using uh, face recognition. Um, and I noticed that a lot of applications, especially games applications, they are now capturing our face as their data. So I'm not accusing that this, uh, that this game is going to use our face, yeah. But the emphasis, uh, the emphasis of this webinar is we should consider the consequences. So when you open the application, it means once you click your application, it means the flow of data, the flow of information, especially confidential information is getting flow to the platform. Do we aware that might be in the next five years, there's no longer personal identification number. And then by that time, it's already late because your face is already in the Hundred of applications. Uh, yes, this is in terms of accountability of transparency, but this is also depend on us as a user. Yeah, so please beware with the application using face recognition. Please read the terms and conditions and also the transparency of the data. Yeah, there is only one aspect or uh, 
in terms of accountability or uh, responsibility, the use of a confident, a confidential data. For us, this is quite fun to enjoy this game, but in the other side, we should notice that they are going to capture as many as face, so they have master, uh, they, they have master data. That they have a master data from a thousand uh, user of game application. That we should be aware of uh, regarding face recognition. Yeah. So that will be the and uh, our discussion regarding the corporate digital responsibility. Okay. So this is our last topic uh, because I have uh, only several minutes left uh, for the awareness. Yeah, because, uh, I'm really sorry, uh, this is going to be the accounting uh, because I'm majoring from accounting, but this is also applicable for uh, another aspect in uh, economy. Uh, for our further awareness, we should be prepared. We should not be um, afraid of, we should be prepared. So uh, the implementation of AI, uh, as you know, the first, uh, the level of implementation of AI, the first one is narrow artificial intelligence. This is current stages of implementation of AI. This is very narrow. This is very um, uh, basic of implementation of AI. Uh, Siri is, uh, Alexa is uh, narrow artificial intelligence. So Siri and Alexa, they are only answer depend on the data that um, Apple or uh, uh, the platform is input, so they cannot uh, answer. Yeah, you can. Uh, there's a lot of. Uh, you can try to asking questions, but if the provider is not uh, input the answer, so they cannot uh, giving you the answers. There is the very narrow artificial intelligence. The second uh, stages is general artificial intelligence. Yeah, so I put the, if you notice the movie of Bimax, yeah. Bimax is just movie in the beginning, yeah. Um, but Bimax, if you notice, they already put emotional over there, yeah. They can detect if there's any decrease of your uh, health conditions, the Bimax, yeah. Uh, the first time it's just movie, but now it's quite impossible. And then uh, in the right side, this is, uh, if you are notice Iron Man, yeah, Jarvis. Jarvis is quite sophisticated artificial intelligence. Yeah, uh, Jarvis is also in the beginning is just movie, but now it's quite impossible to develop the Jarvis uh, technology. Yeah. So in my opinion, by Max and Jarvis is form of super artificial intelligence. It close to super artificial intelligence. So, what is actually super artificial intelligence? We should be prepared when super artificial intelligence is already implemented. It means almost ninety five percent that artificial intelligence all is already uh, we call it uh, copying of human. Yeah, they already put emotional over there. They put already put um, any human aspect in. Uh, software or uh, application. So uh, by, by the definition, super artificial intelligence, mimic or understanding human intelligence and behavior. Artific uh, super artificial intelligence is where machine becomes self-aware and surpass the capacity of human intelligence and ability. Yeah? So that will be the level of implementation of AI, but for the current conditions is already is only for narrow and general artificial intelligence, but beware, we should be prepared when the when the stages move into the super artificial intelligence. Yeah, it just it's just in terms of a period. I mean, in the next five years, we should be uh, prepared. Okay, so this is several topics that we should be aware. Yeah, accounting artificial intelligence. Yeah, actually, artificial intelligence is already. Uh, quite famous in many aspects in terms of like our team mentioned before, credit approval. Uh, we are no longer credit approval based on artificial intelligence. Yeah. So beware if you have a digital tracing in bad depth, yeah, because it will trace with the artificial intelligence. Yeah. But in specific in accounting area, 
The first one is artificial intelligence in auditing. Yeah, in very narrow implementations, audit is already used software. Yeah, so to reduce the sampling of audit, AI is taking over to overcome these limitations. Artificial intelligence in fraud detections. Yeah, uh, in terms of fraud financial statement or in terms of fraud other aspect. We already use artificial intelligence, especially in the banking industry. The third one is artificial intelligence in automatic collection account receivable. So can you imagine that now account receivable is can be replaced by the artificial, uh, artificial intelligence? Artif uh, artificial intelligence in accounting database, artificial intelligence in accounting information systems, and artificial intelligence in management accounting. Yeah? So this is bringing perspective to us that we should be more uh, enhanced in terms of our competency because uh, some of our competency will be uh, replaced by this technology. But in the other hand, this is also opportunity for us to enhance our competency because there are still many aspects that cannot be covered by artificial intelligence. Yeah? So also this is a uh, part duties of the university to prepare the a framework for the uh, many subjects that are quite related to the implementation of technology. Okay, so that will be the end of our webinar sessions. Uh, many aspects is, uh, is still not covered in this webinar sessions, but uh, at least this will enhance our awareness regarding the the data information that we input in the online platform and what will be the consequences that we should be aware. Yeah. So uh, thank you for the uh, all all the divisions uh, that already taking part to this webinar session. Uh, thank you, Marami, Salamat Po, and then terima kasih. Thank you for the insights, uh, Bapak Hari. Jadi, so uh, Bapak Hari has explained a lot of how IT currently plays a very important role uh, in our daily life, uh, especially for the continuity of an organization, and now how important the risk management process is to an organization to minimize risk and ensure risk remains at an acceptable level. Okay, moving to the next chapter. Um, we will listen to Dr. Dr. Christian Paul Moyon from University of Indiana, College of Business Administration, responding to what we heard earlier, the delivery of lectures about corporate risk management, IT risk, and current development. Please welcome Dr. Christian Paul Moyon, uh, University of Indiana. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So I just want to check if everyone can hear me okay. So thank you for this opportunity, uh, Universitas Sabanya uh, Bayangkara Jakarta Raya for, uh, for having this um, activity. It is very insightful. So I would like to commend uh, Dr. Aloysius Harimuti for sharing his expertise and um, you know profound information about, um, about information technology that took place in all our organizations. So uh, as my additional comment, or I would just like to say my uh, my inputs about the about the session is that it is very wonderful. It is timely and relevant, especially to our new normal setting right now, that we are very reliant to technology. We are very reliant to internet, and um, we have a distant learning because of the pandemic. So talking about the corporate risk management as aided by um, IT advancement, indeed a pressing concern, not just for Philippines, but to all countries worldwide. So even to advanced and highly industrialized country face a pressing threat for data breaches. And in fact, as reported by Dan Shui Ho, last January 2021, if I'm not mistaken, that about 3.5 billion people saw their personal data stolen in the top two of the 15 biggest breaches on, in this century alone. So one most common uh, breaches is actually very familiar to all of us, which is from Adobe, Adobe rather, from Canva, from eBay. So I believe everyone knows who, who is eBay, the LinkedIn, 
Okay, the Dogs Mush. This is a social networking site for Dogs Mush, MySpace, and even Yahoo face data breaches for uh, for this century, where almost all our information, our personal information, are actually being publicized. No, and despite of being rich and big company, there are we are or no one is susceptible with a data breach. So how much more with a small and local um, companies, especially in the Philippines and in Indonesia, per se. Now, and also as discussed by Dr. Murthy, it is essential for all organizations to follow effective steps in placing information technology. So he suggested a framework on how we're going to identify what would be the best suited on um, information technology or MIS for a specific organization, okay? And uh, beginning to implement management information system is a must, especially in the digital era. So, well, this is a way to minimize risk for data breaches and to provide a better information for better business decision making. And in fact, the Philippines has a um, promulgated the law of the Data Privacy Act, where it, um, all our personal data are protected. Okay, and not just for personal data, but also even for the data um, of the company as protection of their intellectual property. Okay, so. Uh, also, um, Dr. Motki actually um, discussed the, uh, the information technology governance. How are we going to manage or how are we going to, uh, to govern um, effectively our information technology um, um, platform or uh, information technology um, strategy? So he cited, uh, let me just uh, summarize that he cited the CDR of also the corporate digital responsibility which is classified into four. So first we have social CDR so we need to adhere ensuring that all data privacy protection for employees, for customers and other stakeholders are well protected. So he uh, discussed that uh, thoroughly that is part of our social CDR and another one is economic CDR. So I believe he also discussed um, regarding the um, artificial um, accounting methods no? for auditing, for accounting, which is aided by AI. So that is actually part of our economic CDR where sharing of economic benefits of digital work with a society, especially for taxation, is also aided with an artificial or advanced artificial intelligence. And another one for technological CDR, you know, ensuring ethical AI decision-making algorithms to make sure that all the, uh, the information provided for our AI are, you know, follows ethical conduct, which is acceptable by everyone and should not um, cross bound with the law implemented by um, each country. And also the environmental CDR. So we do have environmental corporate data, uh, digital um, responsibility, following responsible recycling practices for digital technology, and even um, our, what we call this, um, our technology being used, especially like, for example, for our air condition. So we need to make sure that it is an eco-friendly. So we, we always um, encourage all the manufacturers, all the businesses to adhere with environmental concerns or environmental responsibility as they offer services and products to, you know, to everyone or to the public to, to have a more convenient life, okay? And also for the CDR framework process, which is actually um, suggested by Dr. Murky or discussed by Dr. Murky, uh, it is a very refreshing for me. It is very, um, it is very insightful. You know, the process that he uh, presented a while ago, the creation, the operation and decision making, the inspection of impact assessment and refinement. And this is actually an ending process as he discussed it. So meaning right after we refine the, the strategy created by the organization, so we need to go back to create another in order for us to provide a better, uh, a better service or a better practices of what we did before. Okay, so in a holistic CDR approach, sustainability and uh, digitization goes hand in hand. So they always go together. This bolsters stakeholders' confidence in the digital economy while at the same time reinforcing companies' confidence in their digital and data-driven um, business models. However, 
the broad scale of social acceptance of new technologies and business models can only be achieved if companies manage the digital transformation in a value-oriented, responsible, and ethical manner and put the human aspect at the center of their activities. Because all of these are, uh, as at the concluding part of Dr. Mutke's discussion, now all of these are irrelevant, all of these are useless. If we don't put um, human, okay, ethical considerations of human nature or a social being of a human, a center of the activities in refining or recalibrating or reinventing technological advancement strategy for business decisions. So uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, have a great day, everyone. Maraming salamat po. Thank you for the remarks, Dr. Christian Paul Mayan of uh, University of Chicago. Um, moving on, uh, let's get the discussion started. Maybe uh, I will read some questions in Zoom. If there's any. Uh, so, are we going to wait or? Pahari? Oh, okay. So thank you, uh, Dr. Paul Moyan, for the response. Um, I actually noticed uh, several keywords over here. The first one is the human aspect uh, in the center of the community. It is important to make sure that the uh, ethical value will implement. So. We should uh, put human aspect, not get rid of human aspect, in the center of the community implementation of uh, IT. So ethical consideration is depend on the human involvement in the uh, implementation of IT. And also, Dr. Payal Moyes uh, already mentioned uh, data stolen from uh, several platforms. That should be our awareness. That should be uh, our concern. That um, we should be careful because there uh, several platform is quite uh, famous, uh, like eBay. Uh, that uh, very famous and very accountable organizations. But it seems they uh, they still experiencing uh, data breaches. So uh, that will be our awareness regarding the uh, data stolen cases right now. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Paul Maron, for the uh, insight to uh, regarding IT implementation. Okay, so if there's any questions regarding uh, AI, IT part of corporate governance, uh, you can put in chat uh, section. Otherwise, you can raise hand and then we can uh, point out your uh, Zoom. Okay. Hmm. Ada satu. Oke, okay, Labita Kansa. Oke, okay, uh, Miss Labita Kansa, what will be the questions or my do you want to share with us? You can answer. They can ask in Bahasa. Yeah, I think uh, you can get in English. You can uh, use Bahasa. It's uh, fine with us. Labita Kansa is still with us.
Okay, so meanwhile, we are uh, still a few minutes uh, for the questions. I'm also uh, put, uh, emphasize uh, what we have today is quite theoretical based, but uh, we can easily mention it, uh, adherence, monitoring, uh, and then with the other aspect. But the most important thing is, it, is will be when it becomes uh, practicable. The, it, it not goes easy when we are mentioning like in uh, like in the theory, but uh, when it goes to the practice, then it will be more effort uh, and management support from top management, middle management, lower management is quite important to support the implementation of IT governance or IT framework. So yes, for sure we can easily mentioning like in uh, like in the theory, but when it becomes practice then a support uh, from all uh, level management will ensure or will uh, support the implementations of IT governance. So yes, there's a lot of uh, challenge. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, obstacle for sure when the IT when we are speaking of IT, but uh, especially regarding the uh, expense cost because it's quite uh, costly to, uh, if you want to make, uh, or we, if you want to develop our uh, implementation of IT, but it depends on the uh, objective of, uh, of the corporate, it depends on the objective of the firm, uh, when they want to develop their own implementation of IT. Okay. There any? Okay. Are we going to? Okay. It seems, uh, Mr. Adi, if there's any questions, I'm asking permission to leave from this webinar sessions, and we are going moving forward to the next. Uh, okay. Okay. Please, sorry. Yes. Uh, once again, thank you so much for. Bapak Alicia Sarimukti, PhD, and uh, Dr. Christian Pormoyon uh, from University of Mindanao. Um, moving on, uh, please, the dean will give the e certificate to Bapak Ali, resource person from FED Barajaya, and Dr. Christian Moyon will be. Um, show up in uh, screen for uh, responding from the University of Mindanao. Please, uh, Dr. Christian Itzi, time is yours. Mr. Hari, thank you for the great material for today. Thank you for inspiring us. Okay, thank you, Ibu Isti. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the for, uh, International Collaborative Lecture Series webinar has been held uh, as a collaboration between University. Bayangkara uh, Jaya University and University of Mindanao has been done. So uh, it has been our pleasure to host this event. Uh, we look forward to see, seeing you at the next lecture event. Thank you. Are you all signing out?
Okay, before we leave, um, let's take a picture together. Okay, uh, open your camera. Okay. Satu, dua, satu, dua, tiga. Oke, satu, dua, tiga. Oke, berikutnya. Oke, satu, dua, tiga. Berikutnya, satu, dua, tiga. Oke, berikutnya, satu, dua, tiga. Oke, berikutnya, satu, dua, tiga. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah. See you. Thank you, Bahari. At the lecture. Thank you, Bahari. Thank you, Bahari. Bye bye. Salamat. Pak Iza, Pak Christian. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gina. Dokter <laughs>